Hey guys, so real quick, I just wanted to jump on. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me about a trombonzino squash that I grew. Um, I have lots of friends in the area, they're like, what is that thing? And so I wanted to chat with you real quick about trombonzino squash. I'm currently doing an experiment where I have two trombonzino squash just hanging out in my pantry. Um, my pantry is not temperature controlled. It doesn't have... Um, it's not completely pitch black or nothing, but I just have them just hanging out here on the counter next to my crock pot and my salt and chip storage. So I just have these guys hanging out here, but I'm going to let these sit here as long as they will um, stay good. They're two different sizes. This one's a little bit older. It's a lot longer. And this is a little bit of a younger one. And my goal is to see how long without being in like a root cellar or something, those ones are gonna last. Um, I had one originally um, setting on the counter and my kids, um, thought it would be fun to play with it and broke it in half. So I haven't been able to use that one. So tonight I'm actually going to cook up some trombonzino squash. Um, and I'm going to puree them like you would butternut squash. And then I'm actually going to do, um, a pork tenderloin, just like a sliced pork tenderloin, similar to a pork chop, um, with more of a sausage sage dressing seasoning. So I'm going to put some sage, salt, pepper, garlic, um, and kind of have this feel like a Thanksgiving-y feel. Um, I'm gonna sweeten these more like um, a sweet potato and to see like a sweet potato casserole kind of flavor and see how this goes off. We've only ever eaten trombonzino pretty young and fried. So this is our second go of trombonzino squash um, to see if we like it, um, to see if it stores, and then also to see if this is something we wanna grow next year for ourselves and for our animals. All right, so those are simmering. Like I said, super simple, salt, pepper, garlic, sage, um, to give it kind of like a Thanksgiving um, bread, bread uh, dressing flavor. And then we're gonna do peas on the side, just as that's a familiar flavor for the kids. And then these guys are about done. Okay, so I sliced these up with a knife to see they're starting to come apart. You can see they, they're cooking up just like a gourd would, like a butternut squash or even a pumpkin. Um, so we're gonna drain these and get these pureed. Hey guys, do we know where Mama's colander is? I haven't seen it. Is it on the other side? What does it look like? It's a bowl with holes in it. No. It's a gray noodle. The holy bowl? <laughs> okay. Where? Huh? Oh, yes, who's made that call? Spencer. Yes, good job. All right, mom will have to use her other one. Mom will have to use the strainer. We're gonna have to go with this. Not ideal, but we'll make it work. Hot steam. All right, I guess there's any number of ways that I could puree that up, but I'm gonna use the food processor because I don't want it to be like, um, somewhat chunky like a mashed potato might be so we're gonna use pre air so we get it nice and smooth and then um, add some seasonings to it Okay, so I boiled those in salt water and a little bit of chicken broth. And I probably put too much salt in it because this is really salty. But yeah, it's just like a, I don't have it pureed enough, so it's kind of grainy, but it tastes just like, um, just like a gourd, like a squash. So we're gonna treat it. It's kind of sweet, but with the salt, it counteracts it really nicely. So we're gonna treat it, yeah, just like we would something like that. So I'm gonna do some heavy cream. I'm gonna do some, a tiny bit of cinnamon, just like as a subtle taste, not super heavy. I think I might throw some honey in it. Maple syrup, we're gonna throw maple syrup in it. That's what we're gonna do. And we'll see how it turns out. Oh, 
have some fun. Making messes. Don't you? Anybody else like a really messy cooker? That's this one right here. 